Hello everybody, hello vinyl community and uh, welcome to my channel. It's incredibly hot here right now, um, kind of fully fledged summer weather with high temperatures and no clouds on the sky. So um, a part of me kind of enjoys this uh, and it, it will certainly not stop me from uh, uh, making sweaty videos <laughs> about music. So uh, here we go. Um, this is uh, actually a vinyl tag situation where I'm completely late to the party because this was already initiated uh, like in April. This is the experimental vinyl tag. Uh, this was started by the Motoric 247 channel uh, by Alex and I came across this vinyl tag uh, only uh, one hour ago. Um, because I was going through some videos uh, on uh, Richard's Vinylizing Progra channel and suddenly I saw this uh, experimental vinyl tech uh, thread uh, and I thought, well, I have to participate. I mean, if I will not participate now, then I have spent all the money for nothing in all those completely unlistenable records in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's get on with it. Um, this is a very interesting uh, questionnaire and so I quite enjoyed uh, putting it together. Here is my list and uh, let's begin. Those are eight questions and I will really keep it fast and brief. Um, first question is show a record with improvised music. So um, I have a couple of CDs here and a couple of records and even a tape. So uh, let's begin with the CD. This is uh, the album The Wind by Kaihan Kalhor and Erdan Erzincan. And uh, this is purely improvised music uh, by two artists, one from Iran. The other one uh, is, I think, a Kurdish musician from the Turkey. So uh, Kaihan Kalhor is playing the Kamanche uh, and uh, Erzincan is playing a Balama or a Saz. Uh, so this type of uh, Turkish guitar type of instrument. I think I can show you some nice pictures from the booklet. Uh, this came out on the ECM label in Munich, Germany. And yeah, these guys just sit down in the studio and just start to play. Uh, so there is not much uh, preparation. Uh, this is like pure uh, stream of consciousness uh, by two outstanding musicians. So very good example of uh, improvisational music. And they have done a couple of those albums, always in this uh, kind of free-floating style. So second question, show a record featuring a Moog synthesizer. So uh, let me, where did I put my, oh here. <laughs> So uh, this is the album uh, L'Uomo Nello Spazio by Piero Umiliani, um, Piero Umiliani Almog. So this is a uh, quite a wonderful sort of proto-ambient space experimental music album from the early 70s, uh, basically entirely recorded uh, on Moog synthesizers. So um, it has this, uh, today you would probably say kind of a retro retro synth uh, science fiction soundtrack type of vibe. Uh, I think this album was more or less created as a sort of, um, well, um, library music um, that could have been licensed and, uh, for example, used in on television or in documentaries, etc. But um, now in hindsight you have this kind of fascinating, uh, beautiful record, um, nice vinyl color and a uh, good example of uh, this sort of retro science fiction music. Next question. Um, show a record with field recorded sound. I have a whole bunch of those but a very good example is this one, White Shadows in the South Seas by Mike Cooper. So uh, this is a album very much uh, inspired and influenced by South Pacific folklore and music and by Hawaii Hawaiian music, some music of Hawaii. 
it's not a particularly folky album, despite being recorded by a musician that has very strong roots in American and Pacific uh, folk music. But it's very avant-gardistic. It's a album certainly bordering on avant-garde and uh, fourth world music and ambient, quite effortlessly merging field recordings with uh, sort of experimental music and traditional themes of uh, the people of Hawaii and the Maori people, etc. Certainly a very nice atmospheric album to sink your teeth in. Next question. Um, show a record with a drone sound. So um, I didn't spend too much time deciding which one to show. I just picked the first that came to my hand. That is the album Temple of the Invisible by Robert Rich. So this is a very... Looking for the angle with the least glare. Um, so this is a very atmospheric, dark album that uh, seems to take you back into archaic, uh, almost neolithic ages. Uh, so there is something certainly kind of oriental about it and kind of Mesopotamian if you want or maybe early Anatolian culture. Gebekli Tepe comes to mind. So it's like a very mysterious, uh, very paganistic uh, soundtrack. And as you would expect with this type of album, it is for you to decide if you want to give a, a recording like that your full attention or if it kind of functions more like something in the background, sort of to enhance or to embellish your day. <laughs> so, uh, fifth question, show a record with spoken word. I can show you two records with spoken word. First, this is uh, the EP called Panic of Looking by Rick Holland and Brian Eno. Um, this is a combination of uh, Brian Eno's music and poetry, uh, in most parts re recited by uh, Rick Holland himself. Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of poetry plus music. It's not a combination I intentionally seek out. But I must say, in this case, it works pretty well. And this is actually a very, very nice record. And uh, I quite enjoy it and um, find it actually quite captivating. Now the other example of uh, spoken word um, is this album here and this is quite fitting for this list for another reason. This is uh, the album Sadness of Things by Steve Stapleton and David Tibet. Of course David Tibet from Current 93 and Steven Stapleton is of course Nurse with Wound which will come in later for question number seven. Um, so this is a very atmospheric, very dark album that really doesn't pay much attention to the passage of time. So you get this 25 minute long droney sound um, with uh, kind of very minimalistic embellishments along the way. And uh, there is uh, now and then a bit of recitation going on, a bit of spoken word, um, particularly spoken by a young kid. So uh, that's The Sadness of Things by uh, David Tibet and Stephen Stapleton. All right, uh, next question. Show a record with a processed instrument or voice. Um, I can show you again two uh, interesting examples of this. First one is the Throbbing Gristle live box. Um, this... Uh, I think originally came out as four, four CDs and this is kind of the final release uh, putting all four together uh, with the uh, Thorbing Gristle live music of late 70s and early 80s. Um, so there is a lot of process stuff here that goes without saying and it's a quite a fascinating uh, part of uh, sort of progressive uh, industrial music history. Um, the other example of highly processed uh, voice um, actually gives me a chance to test uh, the bleep function in my video uh, editing software because uh, this is the album Open Your by Masana. 
Masana is the moniker of uh, Takushi Yamazaki. Uh, so this is one of the big names of the Japanese uh, noise and industrial music of the late 80s and early uh, 90s. This came out uh, on tape first on the Beast 666 tapes and on Vanilla Records. This is the Vanilla Record edition. Um, as many of the early um, albums by Mazona, uh, it of course take a knock uh, on uh, Madonna. He did that uh, usually using kind of a nude uh, imagery of Madonna on his albums. So he did that more than just once and made a habit of um, spoofing Madonna on his early recordings. Um, this uh, had been released uh, as a album on vinyl many years later and it's one of those records uh, where if you are a collector of uh, this type of music then you would probably have to uh, show some serious coin uh, to afford that. Um, so this is pure, pure aggressive uh, Japanese industrial noise. Um, so um, to call it a processed voice is almost a little bit of an understatement. Most of the time, I think the the signal the signal is going through a whole uh, range of uh, distortion and process processing stations uh, before it comes out of the loudspeakers. So probably you can imagine. Question number seven: Show a record from an artist on the famous Nurse with Wound list. Um, I chose uh, one of my favorite German bands. Agitation Free and their third album Last uh, from I think 1976 1976 so this album came out actually after the band uh, had already disbanded and um, But right now this is actually one of my favorite of their records, uh, but that keeps constantly changing this is a wonderful psychedelic rock band with uh, uh, strong uh, leanings towards uh, progressive rock and uh, proto-ambient, most certainly. Uh, also quite experimental. Um, more or less a instrumental band, but um, I find them always uh, exciting. And uh, I certainly enjoy their records as uh, these sort of acoustic journeys. So, Agitation Free, last. And the uh, final question is, uh, show a record featuring a toy instrument. Well, that's a funny one, because uh, you will be probably surprised when I show you this album here. Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. Now, um, interestingly, um, there is... Uh, we all know how this album begins with this long uh, kind of organ drone beginning played by Richard Wright and... Um, Probably a D minor chord or something like that, <laughs> I seem to remember. And uh, actually even even this first chord is kind of being faded in very slowly. So uh, this is one of these classical drony examples of this sort of mysterious sound coming out of the emptiness of silence. Uh, and uh, if you listen very closely, and we all probably did at some point in time, at the beginning uh, parallel with this uh, droney chord, there is this short kind of a spacey special effect. It's kind of a uh, sort of uh, fading out in the background. It's it's really at the very first second, so you never, you never really hear it up close. Uh, it's just something kind of interesting and kind of uh, inviting uh, at the beginning uh, of this recording. And uh, for me, for many years, if not decades, it was quite obvious that this is this this little sound, this two three seconds, had been created uh, by the use of some uh, early '70s synthesizer, probably a Moog or or uh, maybe some kind of ARP or whatever. Now, um, interestingly, there are these two. Um, where did I put it? Yeah, there are these two really well done. Two documentaries about uh, Pink Floyd, the one about the making of Dark Side of the Moon and as a follow-up this one about the making of uh, Wish You Were Here. Now, coincidentally, um, for a couple of seconds you can actually see the instrument they used to do this. And it's a kind of a wooden uh, toy, uh, probably something you would use, I don't know, in a circus maybe or and it creates this 
kind of a quirky sound that um, in an acoustic room temperature doesn't sound that amazing but what they did is keeping it really low in the background with a lot of reverb and uh, suddenly that thing sounds so fascinating it's one of the first special effects you hear on the album in the very first seconds even before the sound actually fully um, crescents um, to, to start the album so anyway that uh, was my revelation about the special effect used um, on Wish You Were Here which is a type of uh, child toy instrument uh, I guess uh, and it probably even may have a name but I don't know the name if you know what it is called um, you can uh, tell me I certainly would like to know anyway back to the heat um, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this and um, see you next time and um, goodbye <laughs>